Hi, and welcome to another Novel Knacks. Well, this week, it's Saturday morning again, and rather than heading up into the attic and working on that, I've been asked to fix up this old cradle. And before you ask, no, I'm not having yet another kid, and no, I'm not going to have a grandkid, at least not yet. I'm fixing it up for my wife's brother's wife's is having a little girl this December. So we thought we'd hand down our cradle to them. So this cradle was used by my oldest son, my youngest son, my youngest daughter, uh, my wife's oldest brother's two sons, and my wife's other brother's daughter. So it's made its way through most of the cousins. So we thought it hand it down to one more cousin. For the most part, it's survived rather well for the last 14 years. Um, it's, it's solid wood and it's a glider, so there's bearing, so it rocks pretty nice and pretty quiet, which is kind of an important thing when you're trying to rock a baby to sleep and not have it uh, make all sorts of squeaking sounds. The it fared pretty, pretty well in the basement. It was a little damp down there, but it's solid wood. Wood likes to be a little moist and not dry out and crack. The, the one issue, though, is the cradle bottom, rather than being made of solid wood or plywood or anything useful, is made out of MDF. So it's um, warped and come out of the groove here that normally locks it in. And I think the uh, makers obviously knew that it wasn't quite what it should be. It's like they took a good design where it would have been a solid plywood bottom and they put a chunk of MDF in because it was cheaper and then put this metal strap in to kind of keep it from bowing too much. The MDF itself is only three-eighths, about an eighth to three-eighths, eh, it's maybe just shy of a quarter, so maybe more like three-sixteenths. Um, three-sixteenths MDF and moisture and weight of a six-month-old just doesn't quite hack, and it's gotten all warped, and um, it's just not held up over time, so... Um, today I'm, I'm going to be replacing this bottom so this cradle can be used a little bit longer. So I'm planning on replacing the 3 8 inch MDF that we have now with half inch sanded plywood that's uh, cabinet grade plywood has a nice veneer on it and so the, the trick will be is for this 3 8 inch board. So I'm gonna replace the 3 8 inch MDF with half inch plywood. And the convenient thing here is, is I'll be able to uh, fit it into the existing uh, groove that the uh, MDF was going into by just cutting a rabbit through about two-thirds of this plywood and leaving these uh, of the five layers There's two layers here that are just about three-eighths. So we'll still have this Layer here hooked into the groove for strength So measuring the length of the cradle we need a bottom board since it actually extends a little past on top of these end pieces we need it to be 37 and 7 eighths. The width is going to be measured from the inside of one of these grooves to the inside of the other groove. So even though it's about 18 and a quarter inches on the top side, we'll probably need to be about 18 and a half to get inside the grooves. So I put a piece of paper in the groove and I marked it with a pencil line and then I 
tried it in a couple other spots just to make sure that it's the same distance all along the entire length. Measuring that distance shows me that the depth of the groove is about a quarter of an inch. So if I take my 18 and a quarter plus a quarter on each end, I'm going to need to cut a board that's 18 and three quarters by 37 and 7 eighths. And that will give me my rough board before I start cutting out the rabbits. So the bottom of the cradle is about 18 and three quarters wide from inside one groove to inside the other groove. To allow for expansion and contraction of the wood, I'm only gonna cut it to 18 and 5 eighths. That will leave a feature on each end where there'll be 3 sixteenths inside the groove and the tab on this end here will be 3 sixteenths inch thick. So, now that I've cut the uh, bottom of the cradle, first I cut it by width and then by length. That gives me the largest possible scraps. And more importantly, I have this scrap that is the exact width of the bottom of the cradle. So this will allow me to do a test cut to make sure the saw is set up correctly for the rabbit um, before I do it to the, uh, the actual piece so that I don't have to make a mistake on the actual piece. So I'll, I'll run the test piece through on one side until I get the, the depth that I want it and I'll cut both sides and I'll be able to test fit in that cradle before I cut the rabbits on the actual piece. So since I had a scrap that was the exact width of the final piece, I notched out the rabbit on both sides at 3 sixteenths sticking out and 3 sixteenths deep. And then I also notched out 3 sixteenths on the end and that allows for the bottom flap to be sitting on top of the edge to give it something to rest on top of. Now that I've made sure that all my measurements are right and the saw is set up for the exact depth of cut that I need, I'm ready to cut out the final bottom piece. So I've cut the bottom out to size, length and width, and since I've already had the saw adjusted exactly where I needed it for the depth of cut and the distance from the edge from the test piece, I was able to get the edge cut down and I was able to leave just 3 sixteenths all the way around on the edge. Um, this still allowed actually for a very thin veneer layer and the second layer and another layer. So there's actually three layers of strength on the piece that, that goes into the groove on the side. Now, the difference between an amateur and a professional is professionals do work like this day in, day out. They know all the tricks. They have the experience of doing it. I'm very much an amateur at this. And I make mistakes. I was originally thinking that the length of this would go all the way to the end to make it stronger and that I would notch around these pieces. Um, but I realized that was going to be a lot of extra work. So instead, I'm going to cut it shorter. But I didn't want to have to cut it to length and then try and get the saw set all back up exactly where it was before to be able to cut the groove. So instead, I measured how long I want this to be, I cut the groove, and now I'm going to cut it for length so that I don't have to set up the saw again for this depth cut. Well, sometimes you measure twice and cut once, and then there's times where you have to measure eight times and cut five, and that's usually how my projects go. So I uh, have the uh, bottom is, is actually an uh, eighth of an inch too long, so how do I cut eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch off each end of a three foot two or three foot half inch piece of wood when I only have a 36 inch table saw? Well, I'll cut off the other end. I've added a um, 
uh, fence, that uh, sacrificial fence or disposable fence. Added a piece of wood to my fence, so now I can take the blade that's 3 30 seconds and tuck 1 30 second inside of the piece of wood, and I should be able to cut a 16th of an inch off of each side of the board, and hopefully then it'll fit. So, I've, I've managed to um, whittle down the new bottom for the cradle. The uh, edges are all notched down to 3 16 so they'll fit into the existing side grooves. The uh, ends are also notched, so they'll fit right on top of the top of the ends. And then there's additional notch to fit into where the ends are. So I've done a, a test fit. I've been doing a number of test fits, which is why I had to make it shorter and shorter and tighter and, um, you know, matching an exist, you know, matching a new part to an existing piece of furniture isn't always just measuring because you take it apart and put it back together and take it apart and make sure everything lines up exactly the way you want it to. So now that I have the piece, the next step is taking um, some tack cloth. Um, oh, so I, I started out so I started out sanding this down once it was to the right size with 60 grit sandpaper and then 120 and then 240. Um, I could probably go higher, but I think 240 is enough for most wood projects. So now that it's been sanded down, there's a fair amount of dust on it that needs to be removed before we stain. So I'm gonna take a uh, tack cloth to it so next I'm going to take a tack cloth that's just, you know, uh, rags that have been soaked so that uh, they'll uh, pick up all the dust. I've um, tried out the stain red oak and um, I think it's fairly close to the existing. Once I uh, rub that in and get a layer of poly on top of it, hopefully it'll yellow up a little bit and it'll uh, match up. The existing bottom was just a uh, load-bearing sticker. So, um, you know, it doesn't need to match. It'll be underneath of a mattress. But So I'm going to take the tack cloth and then I'm going to put stain on. And once that dries, I'm going to put on some polyurethane to uh, waterproof it just to make sure... You know, it'll uh, weather getting peed on and puked on, and well, it is a cradle after all. So, okay, next is uh, finishing. There, a couple of coats of stain, a couple of coats of poly, and uh, I wouldn't say it's as good as new because it's brand new. It had an MDF bottom with a couple of load bearing stickers on them. So, well, Thanks again. If you like this content, please hit the like button. If you don't, please leave a bunch of comments of scathing rebuttal of how I should have actually repaired this cradle. So please subscribe if you want to find out more of my projects. Once again, thanks for watching.